What's going on guys? It's the Filthy Casual, back with another Diablo 3 video. Today I'm going to show you how to clear T16 and GR70 on day one of the season. Hopefully speaking, with a fair wind and some RNG, you'll be doing it within a few hours of getting to 70. If you've checked out my Necro Starter Guide, you'll know that getting to 70 is going to be an absolute breeze for Necro this season. Uh, good news, I've done my challenge rift on my Xbox and I got 35 dBs. So go check that guide out, it'll show you how to get to 70 as quickly as possible. And uh, yeah, we can then jump on Inaris uh, as soon as we can. So what I'll do is I'll show you the Inaris build, I'll show you a GR version to do the 70, and then I'll show you uh, a little LON build that you can put together straight away at the start of the season that will get you up to kind of T8 level pretty quickly. So if that sounds interesting, stick around. Now, before we do jump into it, I just want to say welcome to everyone who's new. The channel has hit 2,000 subs. I'm absolutely amazed. Really psyched for season 17. So thank you if you have subscribed. And if you haven't yet, hit that button. There'll be plenty more videos coming. Now, Inarius uh, has been buffed under 265. I initially said it was probably not worth going for when I did the Necro Starter Guide, but I wasn't planning on them buffing it. Um, and guys, it is well worth the time getting an Arius now because 10,000% damage, that's the equivalent of getting an Ancient in every slot for an LOM build, which is pretty nice. Now you do lose flexibility because an Arius works by having a Bone Storm around you. So you have to tag with the Bone Storm to get this uh, six piece 10,000% damage bonus. So that sucks a little bit, but other than that, 10,000% damage, it hits pretty hard. So really your problems are going to be toughness based to start off with, um, because although the four piece gives you an extra 2% on bone armor, you're only really going to get a 50% DR. Now we're going to get around this uh, of the T16 build by going for gold wrap and boon of the hoarder. You know, pretty staple combo that will make you immortal when you pick up gold because your armor just goes so high that nothing damages you. Um, but let's talk about the damage because that's always a bit more interesting. So we're going to be taking Skeletal Mage Singularity. This hits like a truck. You consume all of your essence when you cast your mages and they deal tons of damage. Um, your Inarius six piece, once you tag stuff with your Bone Storm, then you get 10,000 times your Singularity. You're also going to have Scythe of the Cycle in the cube, so that's 400% when Bone Armor is active. Bone Armor obviously gives you damage reduction on your four piece, so this on the bar here synergizes very well with the Scythe of the Cycle. We're also going to be take, taking the Jesseth Skull set, so that's the Scythe and Shield. What that will do is that when command skeletons are commanded, your pets or minions deal an extra 400% damage. Now, because of the first part of this, they will recommand themselves when they die. So you only have to command them once if you've got good density, and they will just hop along the screen from each enemy to each enemy. Um, and provided they've got this little gold box around them, then they're commanded, and your mages are dealing 400%. So if you think about it, 10,000 is a pretty huge multiplier. 400% is not bad either, and another 400% here. So this is pretty much some of the best combos that you can get for the Necro um, early on. The one-handed scythes are pretty easy to get. There's only four in the loot pool, so you will find these two items very quickly. The same for the shield, you'll find it very quickly. Um, you know, There's only four in the loot pool again for that. Now, other rings for damaging, we've got the Circle of Nailuji Vault. Now, Chances are you'll have this in a cube because uh, you can roll a level 1 necro once you get to 70, spend your blood shards and get a circle ring in the cube and that basically means that when you cast your mages you get two of them. So it's not really a damage multiplier but having two and the fact that they last an additional 4 seconds kind of is like it's like a damage output bonus um, so that's pretty handy so that'll be in the cube dead easy to get. Uh, other multiplier we've got convention of elements. now. Ideally, you'd want Crispins. Crispins will be better, but there are two choices here. You know, I've used a convention to clear T16 just to show it's possible. So if you get a Crispins, you'll be doing more damage. You'll find this even easier. Uh, and I've also gone for Taskman's Theo to buff up the attack speed of the pets. So the Skeletal Mages hit that much quicker and they'll do extra damage basically that way. Now again, Crispins, you could dump the Royal Ring, put Crispins on, um, here put the circle in the cube and then you would just wear the full six pieces of anaris but obviously you have to do bounties anyway to get the set so you know there's a decent chance you'll find a royal ring 
um, you know you can group up and try and find one pretty easy but if you don't want to go the royal ring route as i say you can you can go for the crispins um you know and, th- and that's fine so with you consuming all of your essence every time you use a mage your main problem is going to be getting juice back now there is no generator in the build um because uh you, necro's got some really cool ways of getting juice back without generators so what we're going to have is we're going to have devour with cannibalize and then numlock that so every time you consume a corpse you will get essence back and also uh very importantly on the hellfire amulet here we have life from death which if we just have a quick look see at that you get a chance to, to generate a health globe when you consume a corpse so every time you consume with devour you will get uh, a chance for health globes that's really handy because reaper's wraps which you can craft at level one once you've killed malthiel and um not level one level 70 which you can go and kill malthiel get the plans craft this so that's craftable hellfire is craftable and uh if i just show you if i plop my guy down here and I, I then consume all these corpses you get the health globes and my juice is back and now if i run over the globes i'm now back at max um so that's pretty handy so that's kind of how that synergizes same for blood rush molting we're going to leave a corpse behind which you'll then auto consume by your numlocked devourer so again that will keep your juice up pretty high and the idea is, is that once your juice gets up to kind of about here i pop it uh great if you can get it up to full um, but you know don't worry too much about it necessarily being full and also the requiem cellar plate will also help because this will double the amount of essence you get from devourer and if you go over your max it'll give you a kind of like a drip feed basis uh, so that's pretty nice as well now you don't have to have this here you can take the skeletal mage shoulders um, you know, so they could go in the cube as well, and that would mean that when you did cast your mages, oh, wrong button. When you cast your mages, when they disappeared, they dropped two more corpses on the ground. They'd get auto consumed by devourer. They also would drop health globes potentially, gobble them up, and you get more juice. So really, if you think about it, you've got your six pieces, which you're going to get through your journey. Um, you know, you're going to be picking up one armor piece here, and you've got choice of two. Uh, gold wrap you're going to need unfortunately you, got, you can't really have any of the belt uh, amulet is open hellfire would be best but if you're not lucky and you don't get one of the passives um, that we're recommending then you know any amulet will do this is craftable only four in the pool for this only four in the pool for that uh, rings choice of two and uh, one you can get from doing bounties so you know the build it's not particularly tough to put together uh passive wise uh whilst we're on it commander there isn't dead this is great because it means you could you know, get your golem back much quicker so if you do run out of juice just click him devour and then uh, you get the, the globes and get the uh, get the juice that way uh, command skeletons this rune's completely debatable i've gone for freeze and grasp just so that i can freeze anything that looks nasty but by all means you could go for dark mending uh, you could go for Enforcer to reduce the essence cost. Uh, it doesn't make too much difference for the T16 version. And uh, Overwhelming Essence is more damage. So more, more juice, more damage. Final service you will need because your minions... Or because You'll need this because your gold wrap won't always be up. And you will proc. You'll probably proc at the start of the rift maybe. But as soon as you kill something, then that's it. You're away. Uh, extended servitude will give you longer time on your mages now guys the other builds i'm going to show you are going to look very similar to this there's just going to be a few subtle changes um but yeah this will do gr uh not gr t16 with only 400 paragon i've had um now the gear wise okay the weapon is ancient the boots are ancient as is the uh trousers but um what i did in the footage was i only had imperial gems in but obviously i've gone back to my armory and put this on and i'm too late <laughs> too filthy casual and lazy to take them out uh but yeah guys you don't need much sheet damage to do this this is doing t16 with you know i probably was under half a million sheet damage uh when i did it so you know not not too difficult to get together so the gr version for doing um your gr 70 uh is very similar but we're going to drop the golem and we're going to put aura of frailty in its place um, and that is simply because we need the damage reduction so you've got your 50 percent for your anarius we're then going to have a dainty's binding so obviously whilst you're rolling for your gold wrap you know you might get one of these then 
that'll give you up to 50% damage reduction and then you're going to need one extra 50% damage reduction source so I've gone with Unity but a Wisdom of Kalon would do the same job it would be essentially another 50% DR so either one would be great or you could take yourself a Lornel Sunstone maybe um, this would probably be my last pick because this is great for if you don't get one shot because then you toughen you the lower your health goes the higher your toughness gets but it doesn't stop you from getting one shot so um i would uh, i would put it in now in the gr70 clear which i'll have on in the background i actually died twice in that um that's with getting probably the worst mob type i reckon for necro which is the uh, grotesque they just blow up and you get wrecked uh, my first death I think I played particularly poorly and the second one I, I can't remember what happened probably just a bit of bad luck um, but it doesn't matter you still do the GR 17 8 minutes or whatever it was uh, and it's absolutely fine I did take armor gems just to buff up the toughness and I also took a esoteric again just to uh, buff up the toughness and I deliberately didn't take a third legendary gem again just to show that it is quite easy so ideally you would have a uh, gizzard there uh, just to buff your toughness up but it's the same concept it's the reaper's wraps it's the skeletal mage it's the devour you don't have the luxury of the golem um, which is a bit of a bummer but you're you're doing kind of five grs lower so you will find it easier to kill stuff doing the gr 70 than you will on t16 so that will basically mean more corpses and that will then mean um, more juice and more health globes so it still works pretty fine uh, but the rest of it is the same the cube's the same uh, there's not really much uh, that's changed obviously i've got the circle on because that's where you most likely have it so that's uh, going to be the gr version now to get yourself the inari set what i would do uh, is as soon as you get to level 70 i would be uh, going for something like this now if you checked out my lawn basics video you'll see that i can do t8 with this particular build and this is with just one ancient item Scythe of the Cycle and the Stragul's Corroded Fang. Other than that, guys, it's a complete carbon copy of the T16 build. So Gold Wrap, Boon of the Hoarder, and then plays exactly the same. But I could do T8 with this with just one Ancient. The rest of this gear was crap. Um, you know, bad stats, didn't put Legendary Gems in it. No, you know, sorry, no Legendary Gems other than the Boon of the Hoarder. No normal gems in my gear. Wizard Trousers. Um, dexterity on my amulet uh, shoulders that do nothing gloves that do nothing offhand that does nothing um, you know by all means you could maybe go for corpse explosion gloves here and there's black death or whatever you want to chuck my point is is that necro with one ancient and a couple of other multipliers will absolutely trash any content that you need to do and uh, you know it's just finding that one ancient item now I would recommend crafting 11 goes of Reaper's Wraps when you get to level 70 as per my Necro Starter Guide and that will give you a good chance of getting an Ancient. So I crafted all these in one go and the last one as it turned out was Ancient. It could have been any one of these. You do it one at a time obviously and stop as soon as you get an Ancient one. Um, but it's worth the gamble guys because this multiplier is absolutely huge. So at 70 you'd be doing that. You'd be getting one handed scythes upgraded to get these two multipliers together or cobbling together whatever you want and uh, going back with a level one character getting the gold wrap and the circle of Nilusia vol keeping your eye out for a puzzle ring or a portal to greed's realm and that will be how you'll set yourself up now what i would do is i'd probably play at a high difficulty level t7 t8 once i've got this set up until i have found a stewart's greaves and also a lost time the reason for that is because these are both massive move speed buffs so when you do a teleport you now have 100% move speed from your Stuart's Greaves um, if you get a lost time you will then take your bone armor and swap it to the cold rune harvest of anguish because you will get up to 50% extra move speed for lost time and also you would probably um, dump one of these passives uh, to try and work in fueled by death um, again because you know you just want the move speed basically uh, so fueled by death is uh, here and again another 30 percent move speed i would then drop the game probably to maybe torment one um, because you're still only going to get the six uh, bounty maps from doing it but it's up to you you know you can play it on t4 5 6 whatever floats your boat uh, but bear in mind guys you're not going to have any toughness other than your gold wrap 
So you know you're gonna have to be looking out for these toughness items uh, as we had a, as we had a look at. Um, you know, wisdom of Kalon for extra burn armor stacks, golem screen breaches. Um, you know, for thirty percent damage reduction. Lornell Sunstone we talked about. Uh, you know, unity that type of thing. Um, you know, so just just do your best and. Once you've bashed out your season journey, you'll do it really quickly with these move speed buffs and with the damage buff of one ancient item. That will mean you can get your Anarius pieces. But guys, don't wear Anarius until you get the six piece because you'll do way more damage this way. Um, you know, and obviously every time you find an ancient, your damage goes up. It is diminishing returns, but the next one, once you go to two ancients, you'll be able to go up another difficulty level because it'll be double damage. Um, and obviously, you'll you know you'll want to find your skeletal mail shoulders, a requiem serrated plates, a tasker and theo, a golem skin breaches. Um, you know, maybe a little oryx crown or, or whatever it is. You need know, you to craft yourself a hellfire. All I'm getting is this is a complete crap build, with crap stuff, and it'll do T8. So you know, just you know. Go as far as you can. And I think in the footage, uh, I don't have a. Um, I've got an imperial gem, or maybe even just a marquee gem in my weapon. It's so easy, guys. It really is. So that's it. So hopefully, with the necro starter guide that I've already done, you'll be able to get yourself to level seventy dead quick. Hopefully, you'll be able to get yourself one of these builds set up and do TA pretty quick. You'll then bust out your season journey in record time. Stick your Irish gear on. Smash GR seventy. Smash T sixteen. And then, guys, you are completely away. Now, you can, if you do find a Crispin's gear on to uh, Death Nova. That's pretty good. That's much. It's more fun to play. Uh, probably a little bit stronger in some respects. But, guys, it's totally up to you. I've just gone for this video simply to give you the way to do it with what I think is the least amount of materials needed, the best chances for RNG, um, and, and doing it like that. I don't want to make you a build saying you need a Crispin's and a Wisdom of Cologne because they're both a pain in the butt to get. But you know, if you do get them, great. Guys, I hope that was useful. Um, I wish you all the best for season 17. Uh, if you're gonna pick Necro, good luck. It's a, it's a fun class. Good luck whatever you're playing, but Necro is gonna be a lot of fun this season. So keep your eyes tuned for some more Necro content. Um, I might roll an ult in the season, I'll see how I go. But I've been the Filthy Casual. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave me a thumbs up and I will see you soon. Peace.